Alex, and give us her side of the story. But first, here's Gargi Patel with the background. Jennifer Arcuri moved to London in her late 20s to study business, meeting Boris Johnson when he was campaigning for re-election as Mayor of London in 2012. She launched her first tech company, hosting summits, and its first keynote speaker, Boris Johnson. I'm ready to hang out. Yeah, yeah look at that. Boris is hanging out. The pair are said to have developed a close friendship. It's claimed Jennifer received favourable treatment travelling on foreign trade missions with the then mayor, Trip, she said she had every right to go on. But reports that she received thousands of pounds of taxpayers' money in sponsorships and grants is piling the pressure on the Prime Minister, who's now facing investigations on whether he failed to declare a conflict of interest. I can tell you absolutely everything was done with full propriety and uh, in accordance with proper procedures. It's alleged that while he was mayor, Mr Johnson was regularly seen visiting Miss Arcuri at her London flat, which was fitted with a pole dancing pole, prompting speculation that they were having an affair, an accusation the PM has yet to directly deny. Well, Jennifer Curie relocated back to the United States last year and she joins us now live from Los Angeles. There's a slight delay, so we'll bear that in mind. Jennifer, first of all, nobody, I guess, in this country outside of your circle of friends will have heard of you until two, three weeks ago. Now, the entire country has heard of you. Your life must have changed pretty dramatically. How are you dealing with all the attention? It's insane, to be honest. Um, first, I want to say thank you for having me on your show, and I'd like to offer my condolences uh, to your late producer, John Farader. Um, I had a lot of respect for him, and it is, a, it is a real honor to be here today. But to the point of your question, it's a pretty, it's, it's a head trip, to say the least what's happened in the last few weeks. Jennifer, um, it, it's an extraordinary experience for us to talk to you as the person at the heart of this political storm involving our Prime Minister and to go through some of the, the details of uh, what he's accused of um, as Mayor of London. I wonder if you can take us right back to the moment when you first laid eyes on Boris Johnson and he first laid <coughs> eyes on you. We have seen photographs of you together, video of you together. I think it would be fair to say there's clearly chemistry. But that first moment, when was it? And what was it like? It was the end of the British Venture Capital Summit uh, in October 2011. And I was waiting around. I had spent the whole day learning about British Venture Capital and you know, LPs, pension funds. And I saw a, a row of men in suits just groveling and complaining about the weather and everything else that they could think of. And I remember going over and saying, hello, how are you? Why are you still here if you're so bored? And they said, we're here for the mayor. And I was like, the mayor? Who cares? <laughs> and I turn around and there's this guy that walks in the room with his hair all disheveled and, you know, his, his shirt untucked and, you know, papers that looked like something I pulled out of my preschool, preschooler's backpack. And he comes across the room and he proceeds to speak. And suddenly he turns the entire room of groveling, cur curmudgeoned, you know, angry men into howling schoolgirls. I mean, it was just electrifying to see that kind of personality change the complete energy of the room. So that's when I was like, who is this guy? I gotta go say hi. And I walked right over and I said, Mr. Johnson, my name is Jennifer R. Curie. I'm the president of the Venture Capital Club uh, at Holt International Business School. And I would really love it if you'd come speak at my uh, Venture Capital event. It's very important you come because I'm a, I'm a big promoter of tech entrepreneurship. And blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And I was like, here's my card, I'll be in touch. <laughs> His team shooed me away as fast as humanly possible. So I just thought, okay, right. I went back to my school. I told them I met Boris Johnson and um, he's gonna come speak at our event. And they all left in my face. So I thought, okay, well, maybe not Boris. I'll find somebody else. So that's when, uh, you know, a few months of prep and development, the event turned into a business innovation, you know, technology summit. <laughs> and this idea of InnoTech and innovative technologies really resounded around this uh, newcomer into London. Jimmy Wales was coming over and through a friend of a friend, you know, I invited Jimmy. So we made an offer for Jimmy to come and, and he kind of said yes until I got a better offer. <laughs> and of course he did get a better offer because Jimmy was hot. So come mid-February, I have this amazing venue in central London in Holborn with absolutely no speakers and, and no event whatsoever. And I'm back to square one. So then I thought, 
Who can I get in London that's going to really champion technology? Who's going to get around this concept? And I remembered I met this man months ago, this Boris guy, that people loved, especially the venture capital community. And if I was really going to champion technology, I needed to get their buy-in as much as I did the politicians. So I went back to my venture capital club, a bunch of dudes. <laughs> and I said, you guys want to go? I got this email to go on the back Boris bus. Do you guys want to go with me? And we got to go talk to the team to go find Boris. No one wanted to go. <laughs> So the only one that would go with me is my friend Eugene, who didn't really speak much English at the time. And he just wanted to go for something fun to do, new and in London, so we went. And I had no idea that day we would be meeting Boris. Within minutes of arriving at Euston Station, he walked right up to me and he was like, Jennifer R. Curie. I was like, you remember me? Do, do you also remember? And he smiled and said, yes. I said, do you also remember you said you would speak at my Venture Capital Summit? And his face went from this giant smile to, oh, I did. And then he, you know, he's like, I was like, great, I'm so glad I saw you because it's actually next month. I'll give you the dates and details. And you, know, you said you'd come, so let's you know, go talk. And everybody's shooing us into the bus at this point, right? And they had the whole section blocked off for Boris <laughs> downstairs. He walked right by it, went upstairs, and sat right behind me. Now, there was a slew of people, you know, everybody wanting to talk about the NHS, the third runway, Heathrow, uh, university, I mean, just everything within London. And it was just a bunch of... Oh, noise. And eventually he turned around. He was like, all right, Jen, tell me about this tech city thing. And I just remember being like, okay, here's my moment. We had 40 minutes on the bus. Blah, 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 blah. Here's, you know, this amazing new thing. It's coming to your city. You know, Downing Street announced this initiative in, for tech in London, but tech in London is your initiative, is it not? This is your territory. You should get behind this. Show people that you are championing this. You know, Silicon Valley wasn't built overnight. We have an entire ecosystem to create. Are you with me? And he, he was like, yes. Can I say no at this point? Because I was so persuasive and direct. I really didn't give him much of an option. Um, and then on the bus, you know, he had a book of, of, of short stories. And I remember, you know, I think it was Voltaire. I remember just striking up a conversation about classic literature and, and Shakespeare. And we, we immediately bonded over this kind of, you know, mutual love of classic literature and, and particularly Shakespeare. So I, I almost feel like that kind of uh, mutual interest almost endeared him to me from the get-go because we found something we both liked. And I was, and we were both passionate about London. And I was here directing him and, and kind of pulling him into this world of technology that he more or less kind of contributed down to just being a bunch of huff and puff at okay. that point. I mean, Tech City was very new. Jennifer, that's one of the most extraordinary answers I've yes. ever heard in my life. <laughs> Calm. Yeah. Uh, fascinating. Mm. So there you are. You're on a bus it's with the Boris. Truth. I, yes. I'm not disputing it for a moment. You're, you're having this conversation about Voltaire. We know he loves all this classical stuff and you bond. So he comes and speaks at your event, is that right? Yes. Okay. How now, many times does he come? But here's the thing. On the well, on the day, no one thought he was actually going to be there. I mean, literally, jaws hit the floor when he showed up. Mm. There were 289 rooms, people in that room, and it was just shock and awe, right? So it was, ins it was absolutely like, I mean, I didn't even know he'd actually be there. And when he left, he said, Jen, see you on the Boris bus, because I told him, if you come to this, I'll help you, you know, I'll, I'll help leaflet, I'll help you with your campaign. So that was kind of the initial understanding at the beginning, and right? And to actually get him, to actually um, get him to, then, to actually get him to come, did, did you exchange text messages with him? I mean, how did you book him in the end? Honestly, it was just that initial conversation. And he really wanted to understand more about what was happening in California and what tips we could learn from the West Coast. Um, so he said, I'd love, to do, I'd love to be able to talk to you more about this. How can I contact you? And I said, well, I gave your team my card. And he said, no, 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 my team will throw it away. I, I just want to be able to contact you directly. So I just said, well, you can call me. So, he, so I gave him my number, and that was that. Um, what was the first message he sent you? He, the first message, I was out with my friends, and it came in, Boris calling Jennifer. And my friends were like, you can't have his number, you can't have his name, you know, it, it, like that. You have to, you have to uh, guard his privacy. And I was like, oh, okay. He, and they said, put him under a code name. And I was like, all right, what code name? And they were like, call him Alexander the Great. So I put it in as Alex the Great, and that's where he, that's how he stayed. <laughs> <laughs> He, so, he, stay, he stayed great, but we're going to get to that. Can um, I just, so the first text message he sent you was <laughs> Boris calling Jennifer. Can I just establish what time of day or night 
He texted. That was literally because we were on the bus talking for so long and continuously getting interrupted. We had now arrived to where he was going to get off the bus. We were going to go to a different town to leaflet. I mean, I didn't really know how it worked, so it wasn't like I was sitting there questioning. And he just said, look, I, you know, I'd love to talk to you more. I got a bunch of people and photographs to do. You know, and it was Boris calling. You know, he just sent me a quick text, and and the evening, you know later, you uh, I mean, friends. like an hour later. Okay. No, Jennifer. No, I mean it was it wasn't much later. Okay, let's get to because we started early in the morning. I mean, we used to have like. Oh, okay. I'm going to ask you just to get to some specifics here. Uh, how many times did Boris come sure. and speak for you? Four times. Four times, and did he get paid for any of those? No. But you would accept, I guess, that, that each time he came and spoke for you as London Mayor, that's good for you. It's good for your brand. It's good for business. It's good, right? Sure. I mean, I was a student. I didn't actually think he'd come, but he did. And, when, and, when a man and that, that was, powerful, that was when I realized. When a man that powerful comes to speak for a student four times, uh, a very glamorous student, if you don't mind me saying, I mean, did you think that maybe his interest lay slightly more than just professional? I appreciate where you're coming from, and I know you mean no disrespect, but I think it's a little bit unfortunate when a woman looks a certain way and is able to be successful uh, in, in however small that might be, and then she is questioned for that success based on the way she looks. I always made sure that Boris got a win out of my events. Never. I mean, what the press don't talk about are how many other events I ran. I mean, I ran about seven other events without Boris. Every event that he came to had a strategic advantage for him at the time in which we were producing the events. So everyone had a, a very specific message. The first one was kind of like, whoa, he came. He's endorsing Tech City. The second time, we, we did this fantastic Google Hangout with two other events at the same time in Los Angeles and LA. He loved it. In fact, he texted me later after the event saying that was the most awesome day. Thank you so much for producing that. Because he really didn't understand what a Google Hangout was. And in between, Why would Jennifer, he do this? In between, in between these four events. Did you see Boris socially? Sure. How? I mean, it wasn't like it wasn't like a regular thing. I wouldn't say, you know, you know, weekly or it, it was more like, what are you doing? Would you like to have lunch? And then we had lunch and that, you know, and then it was, um, you know, when the Google Hangout came out, he's like, I'd like to be able to talk to you directly. We tried having drinks um, out in public or having lunch. It just became too much of a mob show. So I was like, look, you just got to come to my office. I don't have time to to play paparazzi and selfies with you, um, you can come directly to me. And my shortage office was literally on his way home and, or on his way and to and any number of activities. Your, your office was where? I mean, it was in shortage, but it was in your flat, right? Yes, yeah. which is very common for most startups. Okay. Right. And where was Boris living at the time? Because I'm trying to work out how it was on his way home. He lived right next to Angel. So right. many times he would come up Bishopsgate, and Bishopsgate went into Shortage High Street, and it was an easy. How many Easy times stop. did he visit your home? Well, you mean my office? Yes, um, your office. My office had 1,200 square feet, and there were three little bedrooms. You know, there was plenty of office space for him to come visit, in which, which, mm -hmm. where he, he did come visit. Uh -huh. And I, I mean, I can't, I was, I've been asked this so many times. I, I'm not really sure how many times. Um, but it's never like he stayed at any great length, right? He was always late, and then I would say something about him being late, and he'd say, well, should I not have come at all? And then I was like, okay, well, you're here, so you've got five minutes. <laughs> But how, many, talk. but how many times so, roughly are we talking? Was, 10, 10, 20, 50? What would you say? I mean, a handful. What's a handful, Jennifer? A handful over a few years? I mean, I, I don't really know. And it wasn't like he always came to my flat. Sometimes we would meet, you know, out in public. It just, I preferred it. Be, I didn't like it because it always became, you know, a spectacle. Right, Have you ever gone just, anywhere public to, with Boris? Right, I mean, if the London Mayor comes to your home, I mean, you're going to remember roughly how many times. I mean, it's five, it's 10, it's 20. I mean, roughly. You're a smart lady. You, you know the answer. Five? Five times? Five times. Ten times? I mean, Ten between, times? I mean it just a doubled. handful of times. Right, but you get my point. You just doubled it literally in two seconds. So how many is... I know, but it's not like I'm sitting here guessing. I mean, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, six times. Seven times. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I have not sat here and counted. I told you a handful of times. We'll say five. D did, you, did you know at the time that he was married? I had read about that in the news. I didn't have any discussion with him about it. Did, did, you, did you feel that it was normal behaviour for the London mayor, the married London mayor, to come to your home in Shoreditch on a regular basis? I mean, to be honest, did you think that was normal? You mean, did I think it was normal that he came to my office, like many other tech professionals, government officials did? No, I didn't think it was awkward at all. You have a poll, famously, in your 
in your home there in Shoreditch. What, what, what happens with that pole? That I do. S-Factor classes were quite the rage, and I love core strength, so I tried it out. It was also one of those things when I started my, you know, when I was my doing my startup, uh, we would rent out on Airbnb, and I had such a great open space that it was a perfect conversation starter uh, for most people. You know, they like to have drinks and they dance around the pole. Did you ever use the pole when Boris was there? Oh, God. No. It's the kind of thing he'd love. Come on, it's the kind of thing he'd love, that. <laughs> All men do, but no. If anything, I just... We, we, we were, we'd always have a laugh about it. If anything, I asked him and he, how he, to go. He, Boris didn't try and use it for a laugh. I'm never, never going to tell you that. Oh! <laughs> that's not a... That's not, a, not exactly a categoric denial, is it, Miss Akiri? <laughs> I'm just having a little fun. <laughs> um, the poll was with the poll was just a simple fun thing. It was the thing that everybody I, I, I threw out a fantastic Halloween party. I lined it like red carpet, like Hollywood style. And I put my logo plastered across the entire backdrop of the so the entire pictures and all the social media action had my logo plastered everywhere. I love how the press said that I dressed up in a Halloween costume for the Innotech Summit. That was a Halloween party. But just party. to clarify, Boris and, never and the idea was just did you ever show Boris the poll? Did you ever discuss it with him? The poll sat in the living room. Yes, he saw the poll. No, I did not have at length discussions about pole dancing. I made a joke once if he had, if he wanted, to, I, I could show him a, a few things, but that was about it. There was nothing. Like I asked him to, like I just said, I asked him to have a go, and it was a laugh, and that's it. And did, and did, did he have a go? Can you imagine Boris Johnson on a pole? Yeah, yes, we I can. can. Yeah, I mean, come so. on. Yeah, yeah. We just want the evidence. When, when you asked him if he did, did he did he get up and have a try or not? <laughs> no, he sat down with his tea. <laughs> And started muttering. I don't know. <laughs> Jennifer, I've got to ask you the obvious question, which is this, which is, um, according to all sure. the reports in the papers, you told at least four or five people independently that you'd <sighs> had an affair with Boris Johnson. Uh, is that true? Did you have an affair with Boris Johnson? And the only significance of the question is obviously because you know there have been suggestions of impropriety on the professional side which make this relevant as a question. So just to clear this up, did you have an affair with Boris Johnson? First of all, those people are not my friends. These are insinuations and third party hearsay. And no, I wouldn't be going around blabbing to a bunch of people at my school. That's just completely <laughs> preposterous. And secondly, would you like me to ask about your sex life? Because I, I thought about this a lot. When the story broke, of course, the first initial reaction is to, you know, deny everything and to come out, you know, making sure you're so aside. But then when I saw the way I'm objectified and dragged through the street, you know, through the press with all these kind of misquotes and misinterpretations of who I am, I can't believe that I, you know, if I had looked a different way or if I was a man, I wouldn't be objectified Jennifer, this way. I completely so understand. it's because Jennifer, of that reason. Yeah. I understand why you would react like that. And of course, questions about your private life, your personal life and your sex life are extremely awkward and may appear extremely personal. Yeah. The point about this situation is that we're talking about uh, a relationship with a man who is in a position of enormous power and influence and whether he should have declared an interest if he had a relationship with you. So it becomes much more of a matter of public interest, your own personal relationship with Boris Johnson. And it's nothing to do with the way you look or who you are or objectifying you. It's a matter of politics and influence. And that's why the question is pertinent and as awkward as it is. So we have to ask again, was, you know, clearly there was chemistry, clearly there was a connection. Boris Johnson is visiting your office, which is also where you live. Did that relationship develop into an intimate relationship? I think we're forgetting that Boris is extremely personable and it wasn't like he singled me out. He is ex he is there to, you know, talk to anybody who gets in his face enough. And he, and he was always um, a really good friend. And, and I think it's quite <laughs> unfortunate that it becomes that a good friend who has now been... You know, now I'm dragged into the middle of this horrific scandal, you know, and, and the answer that I'm going to give is now going to be weaponized against this man. It's really categorically no one's business what private life we had or, or didn't have. But and, and categorically more important, Boris never, ever gave me favoritism. Never once did I ask him for a favor. Never once did he write a letter of recommendation for me. He didn't know about my tr asking to go to trips. He, he only knew me as an extreme extremely passionate did, entrepreneur Jennifer, of the Jennifer, London tech scene. Jennifer, he did write a letter of recommendation for you when you applied to, to run Tech City, didn't he? You've already talked about that. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. What was it that he did? Not at all. Fake news. No. You, do you have any idea who Milo is? I mean, he is... 
Milo is the most disgraceful human being, but at one point he was an extremely talented writer and I loved his talent. I put him on my stage at my event because he was such a fantastic speaker. But Milo came to me when I was graduating and he thought he was social engineering. Explain to our viewers, who, viewers who Milo is, Jennifer. Milo was a writer for The Colonel, and at the What's time, The Colonel was name? one of the only tech publications in Tech City. Milo Yan Yiannopoulos, but he, he's is now it? priding him... Yeah, so you're saying that the... That he, he's when... priding himself on being this right-wing commentator. And, yeah. and yeah. at the time, he was just a, a tech uh, journalist, really, okay. in Tech City. But it is and he untrue, invited Jennifer. me to a lunch, and he asked me, yeah, he asked me to apply for Tech City CEO. Yeah. And I thought, what a great way to meet people. Of course I'll apply. Of course I'm not qualified, but who cares? The, the campaign alone brought in so many introductions. So Milo was very well known for writing scathing articles. He wrote slanderous pieces on Elizabeth Varley, Eric Vanderclay, Joanna Shields. His writing was just... just Disgusting in many ways. Wow. So of course she told Milo what, Jennifer, she wanted, Jennifer, what Jennifer, he wanted Jennifer, to hear. Let's, let's rewind right? it. Rewind so it. when he asked me to write a letter, of yeah. course I'm going to tell him. Yeah, yeah. Of course I asked Boris to write me a letter. Ask Boris. I never asked him for the letter of recommendation. That doesn't. Let, that letter doesn't exist. Just like my missing laptop. So the allegation exist. is that you wrote or you asked Boris to write a letter of recommendation for you to uh, yes. be recommended for this £100,000 a year job as chief executive of the Technology Quango Tech City. <sighs> and the allegation is that yes. you later wrote about that letter, I still have the letter of rec from Boris, ha, 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 to think that we asked him to write us a recommendation for the CEO of Tech City is just hysterical. It is hysterical. It's hysterical that Milo bought it. It's hysterical that the Sunday Times put it in print so you and made it seem like a scandal. When you, you say you, bought you're, it, you're when you say bought it, did you lie banter? to Milo? Jennifer, so are, you saying, are you saying you lied then when you told Milo? Like I was saying, like, like I was saying, Milo wrote really nasty pieces. No, I get that, but when did Milo you, came did to you me, tell I him, want you to be tech city, what was I going to do? Turn around and say, Milo, I'm not qualified. So I said, yeah, sure, write the piece. I want to be, I'll apply. And so when he said, get a letter from Boris, I'm like, of course, darling, of course I will ask Boris for a letter. Am I lying or am I just playing along? Well, the, it the was point... a friendship. I never thought that this would be turned against me on the Sunday Times okay, where I have to sit to... here and explain okay. so about a clarify... silly email. Okay, so just to clarify, <laughs> that, that email was untrue then that you wrote? You, you, you were lying in that email or...? I was just, of course, a silly... Boris never wrote me a letter. Never. Okay, so and that I letter... I would never have the cheek to ask him. Okay, so that letter, that letter wouldn't exist then? Doesn't exist. OK. Jennifer, before we go to the break, we're going to have a break in a minute. We're all, we're all going to recalibrate. But before we go to the break, did you ever have any intimate relationship with Boris Johnson? Because I think that given the allegations oh, of impropriety... Oh, do you want me to talk about your sex life? Not Because I would love to not, ask you a few questions well, I'm sure about we could the do that. you worked with Jennifer, and then married and then Jennifer, decided to, you know... Jennifer, we can do that another time. We can get into my sex life anytime you like. However, <laughs> I'm not the one that's being accused of impropriety with Boris when he was mayor of London. You know why it's relevant. <clears throat> And Has I'm it just been gonna 10 ask minutes you, yet? Are I'm you falling in love gonna, with me? I'm not going to flog you to death, <laughs> right? I just want to ask you... Are you falling in love with her? Uh, well, according to you, it takes 10 minutes every I mean, man to fall for you. Men just trip over themselves in front of me, you said, <laughs> Jennifer. They fall in love with me in about 10 minutes because I know what to say. I make men trip over their <sighs> private part. And I can certainly see the appeal, Jennifer. There's no question. Do you you're, think a very, that... you're a very charming lady. What, then... a bunch, what a bunch of churlish little gutter snipes. Who? Who? That, those reporters, those quotes. That is a bunch of hogwash. <laughs> Did you not say that well, you didn't to a say reporter? That to the Daily Mirror. I used to run the Daily Mirror. You're saying the reporter made it up, or...? <sighs> the Mirror loved to embellish everything. If I could categorically itemise every single thing they have gotten wrong over the last few weeks, you wouldn't have a segment. We would be here all day. OK. So, yeah, Jennifer. that's churlish little... OK. Jennifer, we don't want to flog yes. this part of it because we want to get to the more serious allegations. Mm. But just, just to put on the record, mm. did you ever have any intimate relationship with Boris Johnson? Yes or no? And because the press have made me this objectified ex-model pole dancer, I really am not going to answer that question. So you won't deny it? I'm sorry. I'm not going to be putting myself in a position for you to weaponize my answer. No, I get it. I'm being used as a pawn. This I don't want to use you. I don't want to use you. I don't want to use you as a weapon or a pawn or anything. It's simply that obviously the answer to that question is clearly relevant to the other questions we're going to ask you about the alleged impropriety, because the nature of your relationship is actually but a matter of public, public interest. It's not. It's not. 
Categorically, Boris had nothing to do with all my other achievements. Literally, someone has written down every single thing I've done in London and found a way to drive back back to Boris. Okay, well, we can, we're going to come. Jennifer, this we'll is take, why I am not answering this question. We're going to take a short break, and I listen. I respect your right. You can answer every question any way you see fit. Mm -hmm. uh, but just for the record, you're not denying it. I'm not answering. That's my record. Okay, we'll so take a short. Don't misuse my words like everyone else. No, nope, I'm going to use you. your your words are coming out of your own mouth on live on television. television. That's there the benefit. No, there can be no distortion them, everyone can hear what they can hear. And obviously you could shut down all that speculation by saying simply, it's not true. I never had any intimate relationship with Boris Johnson. You could do that, you've chosen not to, I respect that. We'll take a break and we'll come back to you in a moment. Thank you very much. Seven forty-five. Welcome back. If you've just joined us free. this morning, we are speaking to American businesswoman Jennifer Arcuri. She's at the centre of a scandal uh, involving uh, cash donations and business trips with the former London Mayor, now Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Jennifer, you have been um, very forthcoming, and uh, we, you know, we are uh, very appreciative of you spending time with us this morning. We've asked you a number of questions about how you met Boris and the nature of your relationship. You've been, um, let me say, reluctant to answer specific about the nature of your relationship because you say that you are concerned it will be weaponized uh, if you give us a more explicit answer. The reason that we're asking these questions and pressing you on them is because of um, the amount of money that your company has received while Boris Johnson was mayor of London and the trade trips that you went on with Boris Johnson when he was mayor. So let's just go through some of these uh, grants that you received. You met Boris Johnson in October 2011. You clearly had chemistry. He came to talk at Inatech uh, on four occasions. And you said the first time that he arrived there, it was like shock and awe. He had this dynamic energy that sort of brought the event, seems to have brought the event to life. Um, two years later, in October 2013, the mayor's promotional uh, arm, London and Partners, gave your company, Inatech, £10,000 in sponsorship to advertise its name uh, at your event at the World Islamic Economic Forum in London, where Johnson was, Boris Johnson was speaking. Um, what did you use that £10,000 for? To produce the event. And how did you... I was told... Yes, go ahead. Uh, initially, when I applied... Uh, to, to do the event, to get the gig for the World Islamic Econ Economic Forum, I had asked for 100 grand uh, because they wanted a, an event within the event. So London and Partners were in charge of kind of building uh, the, the, the tech startup part, and they wanted a voice within the tech community. So they reached out to a few of us. We came in with our ideas, how to get the best bang for a buck within the World Islamic Economic Forum. So in other words, what could we do that would be really impactful Full. Now, in April of that year, I had done the world's first Google Hangout with Boris Johnson. It was extremely successful. We had tens of thousands of views and a lot of interest for more uh, Google Hangouts, right? So when I came back to London and Partners, they said, well, look, we're, we have this amazing event coming to London Excel Center. Let's do something for the tech community. So it was me and a few other people went in and kind of presented a plan. My plan consisted of a Google Hangout where we talk about you know, how we built the tech London scene because by this point it had been going on for a year or so, um, and how what we could what advice we could leave the you know uh, Middle East uh, the world the entrepreneurs coming from the mil Middle East, and we brought over a lot of those entrepreneurs. Okay. We so invited them to your event. Jennifer, 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 Jennifer. Jennifer. So, just to cut to the quick. So Boris, you, you, got, the, okay. you, you got the ten thousand pounds. Now the significance of that is that Boris obviously oversaw LMP, which he created and his office joint funded. So the suggestion has been that you only got this ten thousand pounds in sponsorship because of your friendship with Boris Johnson. Is that true? No, couldn't be further from the truth. The reason why they liked me is because I had a big mouth, a huge network, and so much work. Uh, like uh, the, the like I would, <laughs> the biggest work ethic you could ever imagine. I mean, we were up, we were producing, we brought in so you many different people Boris, to these You never events. asked Boris this to. This is why London and Partners. Okay, you never asked Boris to help you though with any sponsorship. Categorically, no. So when Absolutely you when not. you put I would in never put okay. him in that position. So when you put in pitches for these grants, did you go and talk to Boris Johnson as your friend or? you know, as someone you've done successful no. business events with, 
for advice you on how to pitch. You think I would waste his time talking? No. Okay. I wouldn't waste his time talking about this stuff. I, he was just like, go do your thing, Jen. You know, and then whenever he'd have a question about something or whatever, we might reconvene or he'd send me a text. But it was, I'd never, when I said, look, they're going to do a, the World is Epic Economic Forum. There's a discussion from a man who's come over who wants to build a fund, a hundred million pound fund. So this is where it became, it does it ha happen with David Cameron or Boris Johnson to announce this fund. Both men were speaking at the World Islamic Economic Forum. Boris just happened to be the one within the time frame of the announcement that we got to come to the actual hangout. He didn't do much more than a few minutes because he didn't have time. But he, but but he so only I did was, that, Jennifer. You know, I was... But Jennifer, he, he's only doing this because of your relationship, isn't he? He wouldn't be doing all this otherwise. Ah, but... Ah, but he had just had two amazing events with me. And, the, and right. Twitter or Google has, uh, Plus Hangout page was off the chart with traffic, and we had lots of views. So yep. it's not like coming to my events did him any harm. They took all of 10 minutes. I'm not and saying, they made I'm not him saying, like a rock I'm not saying they did any harm. Community. In fact, quite the That's opposite. Why it came. Yeah, but clearly he's only doing those events. Exactly. He's only doing the events, though, because of his relationship with you. He wouldn't be doing them otherwise, would he? Nobody no, else... he's doing them because I know I produce really good, very sexy, chic, on point, thought leading events. And that's what InnoTech was. There was no other event series like InnoTech. None. There were lots of other tech events, but we brought in policymakers, and that was okay. very okay. different. And I didn't just bring in Tory people. I brought in Lib Dems and okay. Lib. We had all parties. Let's the go to, let's go, let's go to the other stuff. Policymakers. Okay, Jennifer. Uh, the following yes. year, in 2014, your business received a £15,000 government grant under the Sirius scheme, which supports visas for young entrepreneurs yes. to build their businesses in Britain. Did Boris Johnson's appearance yes. at your events and your connection with him, do you think that that help well think of the time I had just done two events my I had video content all over the internet YouTube had tens of thousands of views the people that were running the serious program more importantly the ones at ignite in Newcastle saw the popularity of my events my ability to bring in lots of people and attract attention so they loved the energy that Inotech could potentially bring to Newcastle okay. Boris had nothing to do with that I no, didn't but you're talk aware, to him about you're aware it. that a lot of the video content was Boris talking obviously and people are thinking okay this this woman Jennifer Curie she's plugged in with the the London mayor. She has clout. She has influence and power through him. You get, you get the argument. So are you just commenting that my videos are just so well produced that they have no, to have saying a, that a lot of them, a lot uh, of them selling featured, point, which no, is Boris of, Johnson? I'm saying a lot of them featured <laughs> Boris, and he was London mayor, one of the most powerful people in the country, and that's clearly not going to be unhelpful when people are making decisions about where to award grants. And my grants. audience was a London audience? Yes, yeah. and my audience was London, and it was policymakers, and London was run by this mayor that was very engaging and interested in tech. In, in 2014, in 2014, was. Jennifer, uh, LNP paid in a take a further £1,500 to sponsor an event in the House of Commons. So that's the third event where you could yeah. say, you could say, as indeed some uh, reporters have been reporting, that there was a clear conflict of interest here, because on three occasions you have been awarded money, and you have at the same time got a very close relationship with the person in charge of that money or who knows people who are awarding it and they've worked for him. London and Partners entire remit at the time was about attracting businesses into London. Tech versus Brains was given this amazing op venue, the Houses of Parliament via my uh, new friendship with George Freeman. And he came and we did an entire discussion about robotics replacing jobs. It was, it was honestly my favorite event, one of the best we did. But London and Partners saw the value in what I was building and how much prestige and how, much, how many people would come. So of course it only made sense that London and Partners would sponsor. They didn't sponsor okay, a lot, 1,500 pounds. Okay, but just to ask, during your many meetings with Boris privately, you never discussed any sponsorship or any grants of any of these amounts of money? No. Ever? No, never. You never asked him never for any help with any of this? Ne never. Categorically, no. It's interesting, okay. Never. Okay, we're going to come never. back to you after another short break, Kid. I want to talk to you about the, the trade trips that you went on. Uh, to Singapore, Malaysia, sure. uh, New York and Tel Aviv. Again, the suggestion being that at least some of them, you weren't qualified to be on them, shouldn't have been there. The only reason you're there is because of your friendship with Boris. So we'll come back and clarify that after the break. Yeah. Welcome back. It's just coming up to 8 o'clock and we are talking to American businesswoman Jennifer Arcuri, one of the most talked about women in the UK at the heart of the scandal concerning Boris Johnson. Uh, Jennifer Arcuri, 
Um, we've asked you a number of times, of course, about the nature of your relationship with Boris Johnson. You've said that you do not want to answer explicitly because you think it might be weaponized. Of course, if you simply denied that you had an intimate or sexual relationship with Boris Johnson, that then couldn't be used against you, could it? Yeah, but it also feeds the frenzy of the same people who decided that based on my pole dancing and modeling photos, they can say whatever they want about me. So I have made my decision. I am not going to feed that based on the objectivity of my body and looks. OK, let's go through. We've already talked about the grants that you were awarded. Let's just go through the, tr the three trade trips that you made uh, alongside Boris Johnson when he was uh, mayor of London. The first one, November 2014, to Singapore and Malaysia. Uh, to qualify, delegates had to be able to show their companies have been trading for at least 12 months. You applied to join the delegation representing a video tech venture called Playbox, which had been set up just three months earlier. And the trading history requirement for that company was waived. In February 2015, uh, you inquired about joining another Boris Johnson trade mission to New York. You were told by LNP that it was not worth applying. You turned up in New York while the trip was taking place and were allowed to join events alongside the delegation. And then in November 2015, you'd set up a new venture, Hacker House, an ethical security firm. You applied to join a mayoral trip to Tel Aviv, told that your company was not eligible and turned down. However, you were subsequently informed, or the person who turned you down was subsequently informed that you had received permission from someone in Johnson's, Boris Johnson's inner political team to attend the Tel Aviv trip. The concern is that because of your relationship or connection with Boris Johnson, the normal rules did not apply. These rules that the mayor's team and the export team follow are meant to make sure that the best of the best are represented and that the people, the companies they're bringing, follow a certain criteria, mainly because it's a way to, to create a uniform structure around these trips. OK, so the first one I went on, I applied. They knew my InnoTech events. They knew the kind of dent I was making in the tech community. Everybody knew about it. And I had explained that because my events were so successful, the videos, the content I was getting, uh, I was working on a summarization platform to create bite-sized content. I was already talking to China and Malaysia and Singapore. I was looking at huge media companies, Astro, ones abroad. And when I came to the mayor's team, I said, listen, I've been doing InnoTech, but through the serious program I've been able to work on this with a few developers and this is a seriously cool piece of technology that we could we could backlog you know and I started giving them all the many ways and at the end of the day I was allowed to go on that trade mission as a delegate because of who I was they chose me because of the people behind the entrepreneur have you met the woman that runs the mayor's export team nothing gets past that woman she's extremely fierce she didn't sit me down and let me pass because I was Boris's friend she wanted to know that I was actually doing real business you there went on, Jennifer, and she you spent went the on, time learning about me Jennifer you went on three different trips and there is obviously the clear... For three very different reasons. I, I get it. But three different foreign trips with the London mayor, but someone that you're separately, you have a close personal friendship with, which means he repeatedly comes to your home. So you can understand why people, if they have a suspicious eye, would say, well, the only reason you're on these trips is to keep the mayor happy and because of your relationship with him. Did the press talk about the three other trips I took that Boris wasn't on? Because... I took three other tr trade missions, two to DC and one to RSA in, in San Francisco. The point is, is I was there and present and asking questions. When they were going to Tel Aviv, I told them I was working on an education portal that was going to create a pipeline of cyber skills graduates. The kids, the underbelly, the demographic mm -hmm. of, of, of young people between 18 to 23 okay. who would be Jennifer, unfit in, to in, enter okay. industry. In February, and what okay. I was particularly, please let me finish, what I was particularly interested in was, the, was Unit 8200 in Israel and the way that they created a obligatory uh, uh, military service for their boys and girls. So when they were going over with the Johnson mission, I was determined to go on that one, not wait for Matt Jennifer, Hancock, because they were Jennifer. only going to take the cybersecurity companies that they wanted. Jennifer, so I, Jennifer, you, do you, you want me to finish? You, no, you built a picture of uh, a, a very successful entrepreneur. Did any of your companies ever make money, ever make a profit? Not yet. Not yet. So does it but strike did you, you know that Amazon it strike you as between 10 to 13 years before they ever became I, I profitable? Get it, I get it. I'm just saying that. Do you have any again, idea how startups but, work? Jennifer, again, how many times you have to fail before you can ever Jennifer, make money? I get money? it. I get it. My but, company is just now in a position that okay. I have a scalable business okay. and a story leaks that drags me through the mud. I get it. How Jennifer. am I ever going to grow a company where the smears okay. are based on false pretension and hearsay? Jennifer, in January, insinuations at best. Gen in January this year, uh, you secured a hundred thousand pound grant from.
from uh, Boris Johnson's former ministerial colleague, uh, Margot James, in the Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sport. That's a lot of money. Um, do you think you would have got that grant? I asked for 275. Right, but would you have got that grant for a business that's making no money after a number of years if Margot James, and I'm not suggesting in propriety, I'm just asking you the question, would you have got that money, do you think, from Boris Johnson's former ministerial colleague, a very large six-figure sum, if you hadn't had this friendship with Boris Johnson? <sighs> Boris Johnson had nothing to do with my grant. Absolutely nothing, OK? And let's talk about cybersecurity in the industry. What a mess. It is one of the biggest problems we are facing right now. My company has developed an extremely effective hands-on hacking course that allows people to enter industry based on the skills they achieve in my course. This is a massive problem across the UK okay. and the United and States. Just, and DCMS Jennifer, were far more yeah. concerned with fulfilling that in quota and that need. Okay. So they came to us. Did you know that? Um, they came to us and said, hey, we have this of money and I said wow you have a pot of money to do exactly as we are doing with the the, the technology and where building. is and just a, Jennifer Why Mercury, you fund us? one of the one of the conditions for that as I understand it is that it should be based in the UK where is your company based my company is based in the UK and, and it's never not been in the UK whereabouts never. in the UK I left the UK outside of shortage, uh, excuse me, outside of uh, Manchester. We were living because I didn't have anywhere to live. When I was nine months pregnant, we got kicked out of the house, so I had to live in this tiny little townhouse. We got a gig to come over to the United States, a three-month gig. I was a brand new mom. I had a baby. Yeah. Came over here, just thought, let's just try the United States. Maybe we'll do some workshops. Does your company some events operate, so does know what house doing operate in the UK. out of Manchester? Yes. How many, how many it, staff it do you, and how many UK. staff do you have in the UK? Before this story hit, we had eight staff. Operating two out, contractors of the, out of the and two Manchester part time events. developers. Okay. Can I ask you, when was the last time? Uh, all over the UK Bristol, what? Exeter, London, okay, Jennifer. Uh, Manchester. Jennifer, when was, the last, all over. when was the last time you either spoke or texted uh, with Boris Johnson? <laughs> when was the last time you spoke or texted with Boris Johnson? Uh, last week. I, we, we spoke to <laughs> what one What kind of question is this? Well, well, I, wonder Jennifer, Jennifer, right, on, Jennifer. I wonder, Jennifer, whether he's given you any support. Well, when was, well, just ask the question, if you don't mind. When was the last time you spoke to him or had any contact with him? I stopped speaking to Boris uh, like I regularly when I, got, I was pre when I got pregnant at the end of 2016. And you've not had any contact with him since? I mean... With the exception of the occasional, like, do not ban encryption, what a stupid policy. There was nothing else that I really needed to say. You know, I, I, a few times I'd see the news, I'd send him a, hey, hope you're okay, you know, that kind of stuff. And it was, you know, but there was nothing. Uh, what do you, you reply? And nothing what? recently. I mean, have you had any contact since this scandal blew up? Absolutely not. Do you feel a bit let down that he's not made any attempt to help you through this, given that you're only in the news with all this damaging stuff for your business, as you say, which might be grotesquely unfair, frankly, to you? Do you feel a bit betrayed that he it hasn't is. helped oh, you? Oh, of course. I think Boris has enough on his plate right now. Of course, the average person would say, hey, but, you know, the reality is, is he's got so much that's going on. I need him to focus on his job for Britain. Three years ago, he told everybody, we need to leave the EU. All right. Here you go. You got your job. You're, you're now the head of the country. Go do what you said you were going to do. And I wish him all the best on that. Okay. I do not want to be part of a pawn that is used against him. I want him to stay focused on his job, as I know he's really excited to build back Britain. And that's what I hope he does. I don't need him to call me right now. One day, if we ever need to talk again, maybe we will. But I don't need him right now. Britain needs him right now. And final Britain question, Britain needs him Jennifer. to deal... I mean, just say, you've been, listen, you've been, you've been very candid, you've been uh, extraordinary in many ways. We've pushed you quite hard because we've had to, because these re revelations have been dominating the news agenda here for, for several weeks. What, just finally, what do you think of Boris? I mean, you know him better than most people. What do you think of him as a man? <laughs> um... Oh, man, you're going to have to read my book. I, no, I'm just kidding. I, I, there's so many. Where do I start? I, I mean, I had, a, I had a wonderful opportunity to get to know somebody. And it was really fun to be able to share the love of Shakespeare and literature with someone like that. Um, so for that, I, I, I really enjoyed, um, you know, being able to be his friend and be able to, you know, share in that kind of passion for literature. Jennifer, but Boris Jennifer. is extremely personable. He cares a lot about this country and he cares a lot about people. And I, I you know, he is a guy you want to hang out with. Jennifer, I'm, I'm sorry that, um, you know, in 2016, when you were in your 
relationship and you were pregnant that you did stop contact with him and that must have been quite painful. I just want to ask, you know, we all have close friends who we care about and perhaps even love. And I wonder if there was a stage at which you loved Boris Johnson. I've been asked that many times. And I care about him deeply as a friend. And we do share a very close bond. But I wish him well. I want him to be happy. I wish Carrie well. And like I said, I really do want him to focus on making Britain great again. Jennifer Arcuri, uh, that was a long interview. Uh, not an easy one, I'm sure, for you to do. We appreciate you coming on Good Morning Britain today. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer. Wow. OK, let's go to Lorraine. She always has a calming influence after moments like this. Lorraine. That, what a scoop. That was quite extraordinary. It was, it? Do, you think I love, do you think I love of Shakespeare is now going to be a new euphemism? Do you remember Private Eye back in the day? It was yeah. Ugandan relations. We were discussing <laughs> Voltaire affairs. I mean, I thought the most interesting takeaway, because clearly this all comes down to... I'm sure lots of viewers will be like, why are you going on about the affair, blah, blah, blah? Well, only because normally his sex life doesn't really matter. It's never mattered. It's a matter for him and his partners or whatever. Uh, here, clearly, it's whether that relationship Absolutely. that they had <laughs> influenced the money she was getting, the trip she was going on, her business and so on. That is the key of this scandal. And I thought the fact she wasn't willing to deny it. She didn't that she, deny it. she didn't want to have it weaponised, but actually she could have stopped the weaponising totally. by simply saying, Absolutely. we never had any relationship like that. Uh, but she chose not to. But and I didn't. suspect that will be the, the main takeaway, because if you think they did have a relationship of that nature, then all the other questions get a lot more serious. They do, although the image of Boris Johnson on a pole thing, <laughs> <laughs> dancing, is just like... That's oh. your main takeaway, Lorraine. Oh, by the, way, so by the way, we all know he tried that poll. I don't oh, care what she says. He, he, he wouldn't have been able to resist, let's be honest. Exactly. Let's be honest. Exactly. Didn't she look like Dawn from The Office? Do you remember Lucy oh. Davis? She didn't look like Dawn from The Office, yeah, yes. Was, was, I was looking at her thinking, oh, she looks like somebody. You oh. know what, she's a very compelling character. I mean, it's like, very engaging, very charming in many ways. Articulate and Ballsy, and all those things. I mean, it was a very interesting insight it into was, this woman who none of us have even heard speak before today. Anyway, Lorraine, what have you got for us?